Well, there's a restaurant in town that's made meatballs their staple. When I found out, I had to give it a try. And the chef at the Meatball District is using her grandmother's recipe for the house meatball. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually soak the bread first. Um, so we use 40%, which is heavy whipping cream. And so we're just going to soak the bread, and we're just going to pour it over the bread. And you okay, get so who knew that some of the secret would actually be whipping cream and bread? Yeah. So we use Wonder Bread here. And what you want to do is you just want to make sure you use a slice of bread per pound of meat. So we always take the crust off the bread as well. That's the biggest thing because it doesn't soak up as well with the crust in it. Okay. And so we just kind of mix it up with the whipping cream now? Yep. And so we're just going to let that soak for about four or five minutes. And then eventually we'll throw it into the meatball mix. All right, so those are going. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in some eggs inside the meat. So usually we'll do about three or four per pound. It just depends on your egg size. All right, and I'm actually gonna take my gloves off real quick. Okay. And we're gonna add the mixes to all of this. So we have probably about two tablespoons of garlic and we're just gonna throw it in there. And then about a tablespoon of chili flakes. We'll just throw it in there as well. Two and a half tablespoons of salt. You always want to make sure you have plenty of salt in your mix. That is a lot of salt. It is. Okay. And then about a tablespoon of pepper. And then two cups of Parmesan cheese. Okay. Go ahead and mix okay. that all together. Okay. You don't want to overwork it because then your meat will get tough when you make those meatballs. Okay. All right, so we're going to add the bread to it. So we're going to, I'm going to pick up the bowl. And slowly, you run it in. what you want to do is keep the excess dripping of the cream out. So you want to do as much bread as possible. And so we're going to mix again, yeah. And you can crumble it up, do whatever, whatever works best for you. All right. So Carly, then let's walk through the proper technique of rolling these out so we can get some on the plate. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're just going to grab about like maybe two and a half ounces is what you're going to grab. So this is a little bit more. Okay. But you're just going to roll them together. And so you're going to use your hands and your palms to kind of help roll them. And you're going to force them into a circular ball. If we've mixed everything together right, it'll stick. Right. And that's the whole point. So the eggs are the binders. The cheese is the binder. The cheese keeps it moist with the bread. So that's the biggest thing that you're looking for is as long as your meat is still moist. And then we'll bake them off and submerge them in some marinara. So they're fully cooked in that and braising in the marinara. And then you'll get your famous meatball district meatballs. So half an hour later and all of that work, it's now time to try these meatballs. Yeah. They're you super, obviously love this. Yeah, they're super soft. They're everything you want in a meatball. Like, not super chewy. Mm -hmm. This is so fresh and you can actually taste all of the flavors. I'm still amazed that a big secret ingredient is actually the whipping cream and Wonder Bread. In a bit, we'll show you a meatless entree that sort of resembles pulled pork. Well, if you don't eat meat, the Meatball District has a great veggie creation that's perfect with a plate of spaghetti or even by itself. Owner John actually shows us how it's done. We're going to be making some veggie balls based with jackfruit and chickpeas. There's something really easy that you can make at home yourself as long as you have a good food processor. Uh, one can of jackfruit. And tell me a little bit about jackfruit, right? This isn't something that I've come in contact with a lot. Jackfruit's a natural fruit that's also used in a lot of like barbecue. Uh, a lot of people say it has a resemblance to pulled pork and a lot of vegetarians actually don't like it because it has that consistency but because we blend it with all our sauces it'll actually taste a little different for you. Okay so is this going to be different than a traditional Italian meatball or one of your house meatballs? Oh absolutely it's not going to have bread in it well it's not going to have meat in it as well um, but we use the same base this is our house seasoning which consists of garlic, oregano, uh, salt and pepper. When this is actually all said and done, like, what would you recommend pairing it with? Well, the veggie ball, I mean, they're good on their own. You can make them into any one of the subs. Or what we do with our veggie pasta is we use zucchini noodles and pour it on it. Now, this is just a little bit of panko. Panko... Helps everything stick together, right? Exactly. Yeah. And is it going to get a little messy? Because I've got a full bowl of marinara over here. We put a full bowl of marinara. This is our house-made marinara. This is what gives it the little kind of kick. Uh, if you're making it at home, you can just use any sort of marinara if you're not gonna take the few hours to make it on your own. Blend, 
I know right now it doesn't look too tasty, but. But give I can it. see the bits, how it'll actually form and really stick together, so it'll have that nice consistency. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. So you take it out. You can see like all the jackfruit's been broken up, all the marinara, everything's nicely blended together. So typically here at the restaurant, we like to serve about a three ounce ball, just because, you know, pre-cooked weight, which comes out to be about that, a little bigger than a golf ball. So to cook these guys, roll it in the size you want, gently roll it in flour, you know, make sure you bread it all up, and then drop it in the fryer and sear it for about five to 10 minutes and it's good to go. So now that it's out of the fryer, I think I'm gonna have to give this a little taste test. It really breaks apart just like a hush puppy. And that is so delicious, perfect for any vegetarian or vegan needs. So you've seen breading before with fried chicken and other dishes, but you probably noticed that dish didn't have any eggs, so it truly stayed vegan. In the next half an hour, we'll show you a special chicken meatball. So if you're looking for the secret to a perfect meatball, it could be in the sauce and the type of meat you're using. Mm, I always am. And I'm also a huge fan of chicken. And you know, uh, you say this recipe uses celery, butter, and buffalo sauce. What? The Meatball District truly went next level with these buffalo chicken meatballs. John, can you tell us about the inspiration for this? I love buffalo wings, but why not make them a ball? Oh my god, I love buffalo chicken too, so, so let's get started. Real simple. You get ground chicken. Uh-huh. Add buffalo sauce. Buffalo sauce, we just use like a Frank's hot sauce, cut it down with some butter. So is this gonna be a little spicier? A little spicy, and if you wanna go spicier, feel free to add more. Okay. It's not a perfect uh, buffalo meal without celery. Yes. We'll add some of that on top. We need the celery to cool it down. Oh yeah, there you are. And then our house spice mix, which is garlic, salt, pepper. Take it all together. Okay. And just like our other meatballs, blend it together. And you're working to fold in that flavor. Right, and you wanna get it all spread throughout all the different meat and stuff. I feel like this would be the perfect snack for like a tailgate, for even any of those Royals games coming up here soon. Exactly, so we get it nice and set like that and just make sure, I mean this one's easier because the Frank sauce will cover mm -hmm. almost all the meat over and so you know you got it in you know, different layers. I feel like the chicken also folded a lot easier. When I was working with some of those other types of meat, man, it was a little tough. Well, chicken's a lighter consistency uh -huh. than ground beef, so. Then usually with these, we like to roll them. What is that, about one and a half ounce? Okay. All right, so here's your meatball. Okay. You wanna start in the flour section, roll it around and coat it. And then move on to? The egg wash. Okay. And then on to the panko. I'm really excited about this because the one thing I can say, I have never had buffalo chicken meatballs. There you are. Okay, set it here? Set it there. Okay. So, you know, how many of these would you make a day, do you think? Depends on the type of season. In the winter months, we sell quite a few buffalo balls, so we'll make probably 500 of these a week. Okay, so do these go into the fryer next? They just go into the fryer next, yep. So this is our final product. We top it with blue cheese, scallions, and then this is a house-made sauce with mayonnaise and another round of buffalo sauce. And I wish right now they had smell vision because you can actually smell get the, the buffalo. hints of buffalo and, of course, the dressings on it. Okay, first bite. So I'm a huge fan of buffalo chicken and this is definitely my favorite of the three. Definitely gets my seal of approval. So something wow. else, Bill, they've got some specially made ones that you can order. Mm -hmm. Taco meatballs, right? How good does that sound? So they do that for catering and that sort of thing. All right, that looks delicious. I'm extremely <laughs> hungry 